Hey folks, my name is Hubwood and today we are going to take a very close look at the gaming performance of the Dell G15, which in today's version comes with an RTX 3050 and a i7-1087H, which is an 8-core and 16-thread high-end CPU. Now the RTX 3050 is the little brother of the RTX 3050 Ti and unfortunately they only come with 4GB of VRAM, so I actually tested the games in a way the VRAM would be big enough, meaning not very high or ultra settings for newer AAA titles. Let me point out upfront that this laptop behaved very weird in some cases considering boost clocks and power usage. I know that the CPU was not always boosting at 4GHz, but the performance didn't seem to suffer much. I know that because I also compared the results with an RTX 3050 Ti system, which had an 8-core i7 as well, and the results are just about as I expected. To be honest, it was even a bit better than expected sometimes. I tried everything to make sure it would run with the absolute maximum performance though. The RTX 3050 in this laptop is probably the 80 watt version. I'm saying probably because Dell was not able to tell me which version it is. According to the Nvidia control panel, it's a 90 watt version, which is impossible as this is not supposed to exist. So I'm sure it's a 70 or 80 watt version with dynamic boost. But then Dell said that this laptop does not have dynamic boost. So you see my dilemma now. But as this is not a review, but only an extended gaming test, Let's just start with some games. The first game for today is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Due to the VRAM restriction I was forced to use no more than the medium settings. The game looks pretty good nonetheless and it provided almost 60 FPS on average with a very acceptable 1% low of 43 FPS. Frame times were very stable and the experience could be described as nearly perfect I guess. Next up was Apex Legends for which I choose a mix of settings which I would call medium as well. This resulted in a good average of around 113 FPS with a 1% low of 65 FPS. I guess you can't complain about that for an FPS competitive battle royale game. Considering this laptop comes with a 120Hz screen, this might be a good settings combo for this title. As you can see over here, frame times were very stable in firefights. Just how it's supposed to be. In Ark Survival Evolved, I was using high settings with a resolution scale of 100%, resulting in an average frame rate of 51 FPS and a 1% low of 40 FPS. Arc is known for its great hardware hunger, so I would say the results are alright. I'm not a big fan of using lower resolution scaling in this game, as it immediately starts to look blurry, but I guess it's playable just fine anyhow. Next up I was testing Battlefield 5. As the VRAM allowed it, I was testing high settings for this title, resulting in an average of 68 FPS with a 1% low of only 28. But in Battlefield the 1% low are always bad if you play a game for the first time on a system, so that would get better after playing for a longer while. Believe me, it's always the same with that game. I guess you could also go for medium settings here to get closer to 100 FPS and make use of the faster 100 20Hz display of the Dell G15. Control is a visually quite demanding game. I was using medium settings with activated DLSS as this game doesn't visually suffer that way but gains more FPS. I saw an average of 62 FPS with a 1% low of 39 FPS. I would once more call this a perfect experience, especially considering it's a third person action RPG and a single player game. Cyberpunk 2077 is probably the most demanding game of today's test, so I once more only chose medium settings and also activated DLSS on balanced mode. You can slightly see that the image loses a bit of sharpness, but it definitely pays out in terms of playability and fluid gameplay, resulting in an average of 51 FPS with a 1% low of 30. It's not perfect considering gameplay or visuals that way, but it's definitely playable well enough to enjoy yourself. I was testing CSGO on high settings, resulting in an average of 225 FPS with a 1% low of 112 FPS. You could obviously gain more FPS by choosing lower settings, but in my opinion that is not necessary unless you are a machine or a professional CSGO player, so I choose to go for the higher visuals instead. 
you have to treat yourself with at least some eye candy from time to time. Yeah, I know, it's CSGO, but still. I wanted the dust to shine. Get it? The dust to shine. For the Division 2, I only tested the integrated benchmark on high settings, resulting in an average of 77 FPS. That seems pretty good to me considering both visuals and gameplay. To be honest, I have absolutely nothing to tell you about this game, so next! In Far Cry 5, I was using high settings resulting in both great visuals and great FPS. I saw an average of 89 FPS with a 1% low of 53. You could even choose ultra settings and still get 60 FPS, but I guess it's okay to want some more FPS in a first person shooter on a 120Hz monitor, right? I know everyone wants as much as possible FPS for Fortnite, so I chose the so called competitive settings, meaning everything low except the epic view distance and 100% resolution scaling. Achieving an average of 247 FPS, I guess this would widely be accepted as a great performance. The 1% low was very high as well with 123 FPS. No complaints here. But to be honest, if I was playing it, I would probably choose some higher graphics until I reached an average of around 120 FPS, which could easily be achieved by using high settings or epic settings with DLSS activated on a RTX 3050 on the Dell G15. In Forza Horizon 4 I was testing the high settings preset in the demo version, resulting in an average of around 135 FPS with a 1% low of around 94 FPS. The frame times were absolutely smooth and stable. You could easily cap the FPS at 120 and perfectly enjoy the game on the Spotch laptop at high settings. In PUBG I was using high settings and getting an awesome 119 FPS on average with a 1% low of 73. That's basically enough to fully utilize the 120Hz screen of the Dell G15. The experience was really good and I'm still amazed how much the performance improved for this game since 2017. It's finally in a state where you can professionally play it on an entry-level gaming laptop. Next! If you are playing Genshin Impact, you might know that the game's FPS is capped at 60. I chose high settings and the laptop had no problems maintaining the 60 FPS basically all of the time with a 1% low of 50 FPS. So Genshin Impact is absolutely no problem for this laptop and the RTX 3050. For GTA 5, I was using a mix of high settings, resulting in an average frame rate of 113 FPS with a 1% low of 77. Once again, I'm assuming that a lot of people are still playing GTA 5 online, which would be perfectly fine with this laptop. You could absolutely choose much higher settings if you're okay with 60 FPS, of course. In my opinion, Horizon Zero Dawn looks really beautiful even on medium settings which are basically resembling the PS4 Xbox graphics. I saw an average of almost 60 FPS with a 1% low of 41. Personally, I'd be absolutely okay with playing that game that way. Frame times were okay and capping the FPS at 60 could be a good idea in that case. For Jedi Fallen Order, I saw an average of 79 FPS with a 1% low of 45. The game really has some hiccups and it takes a while before the game loaded everything it needs to prevent these. Nonetheless, the game is perfectly playable on the high settings on this laptop, providing great visuals. Playing Kingdom Come Deliverance on a laptop always gives me a cozy feeling, but getting that graphically quality on a budget laptop is just something that somehow soothes me. I saw an average of 58 FPS with a 1% low of 35 FPS. Frame times were smooth and stable. League of Legends worked perfectly fine, of course, on the highest preset with an average of 235 FPS and had a 1% low of 191 FPS. I didn't even bother to test lower settings because obviously there is no need for that. Next! For Metro Exodus I was only testing the integrated benchmark and here I saw an average of 69 FPS on medium settings. It should be enough for a single player shooter, but the game definitely has some more demanding graphical qualities. I didn't bother to use DLSS in the regular version, as that would only be DLSS 1.0. The enhanced version does provide DLSS 
2.0 though, so keep that in mind. In No Man's Sky I saw an average of 105 FPS on medium settings and a 1% low of 55 FPS. The game had added DLSS recently, which can add another 20% or so. So you could also choose high settings plus DLSS and still get around 70 to 80 FPS easily. The game has been optimized over the years and provides a very smooth experience with the RTX 3050 in Full HD. In Red Dead Redemption 2 I saw an average of 54 FPS at medium settings with high textures and some anti-aliasing. The 1% low was 41 FPS and the frame times were ok. Please note that this game now supports DLSS and probably runs better on Vulkan. So I also tested it with Vulkan, which resulted in an average of 67 FPS and a 1% low of 25 FPS. Also activating DLSS on balanced pushed the FPS a lot. I then saw an average of 81 FPS with a 1% low of 40 FPS, still on medium settings. So the RTX 3050 definitely benefits a lot from both Vulkan and DLSS. That's pretty awesome. I expected Rocket League to run perfectly fine and saw an average of 239 FPS on ultra settings with a 1% low of 98. I guess you could call that pro-compatible material. Enjoy climbing up the ranks with a RTX 3050 on the Dell G15. For Overwatch I was using high settings at 100% resolution scaling, resulting in a great 200 FPS on average with a great 1% low of 135. It basically doesn't get much better I guess, as ultra settings aren't really noticeable in such a fast paced team shooter. Next, In Shadow of the Tomb Raider I saw an average of 59 FPS on high settings with a 1% low of 47 FPS. Perfectly playable for a single player third person action RPG. That's basically console experience with better graphics I guess. On that occasion a quick side note. I would probably say that the Dell G15 with the RTX 3050 is performance wise somewhere between a PS4 Pro and a PS5 if I had to rate it that way. For Walheim I was using medium settings with all post process effects activated resulting in an average of 71 FPS with a 1% low of 34. Perfectly playable and in my opinion pretty enough if you can cope with the pixel style and I can. I was testing Valorant on the highest settings getting an average of 219 FPS with a 1% low of 110. Weirdly, just like with the 3050 Ti 35W laptop, the Asus ROG Flow X13, I was expecting more and the GPU and the CPU didn't seem to be at full load. If anybody has any idea what could be causing this, let me know in the comments. I mean, it's perfectly playable that way though, of course. I was testing Call of Duty Warzone at medium settings and saw an average of 81 FPS and a 1% low of 58. Be aware that you probably won't be able to play this game with the 8GB version of this laptop. You should definitely have at least 12 or better 16GB. The game ran really fine and provided stable and smooth frame times. In Watch Dogs Legion I was using medium settings and saw an average of 65 FPS and a 1% low of 47 FPS. Once again, perfectly playable for a single player third person action RPG. Visuals are alright I guess. I also tried using DLSS for this game but obviously there were some problems as when I activated it the GPU wasn't fully utilized and I didn't actually gain any FPS at all so that's why I didn't test it in this example. I was testing The Witcher 3 on ultra settings with hair works off and saw an average of 66 FPS with a good 1% low of 53. I would probably use a frame cap at 60 FPS and enjoy the game in a perfectly smooth way. A PC can't be that bad if it presents you The Witcher 3 at Ultra at 60 FPS, right? For World of Tanks I was only testing the integrated benchmark once more and saw an average of around 119 FPS at Ultra settings. So if that free to play title is on your gaming list, you're good to go I guess. For Anno 1800 I was choosing high settings at DirectX 11 and using AMD's Fidelity FX at super quality resulting in an average of around 52 FPS and a 1% low of 25. 
the 1% low is actually only that low because frames drop for a second when you change the region. Of course, the average FPS depends a lot on the size of your city you're currently hovering over, so that could be higher or lower for you. Now that's all for today. If you enjoyed the content, please consider subscribing to the channel for more stuff and like the video. Thanks for watching, see you next time, bye bye and tschüss.